Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. I have a question for you. Are you a Christian? And are you a thankful person? You know, the Bible is very plain in its exhortations that we are to be thankful as believers in our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what Paul writes to the Philippians in chapter 4. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Every Sunday at our congregation, we celebrate the Lord's Supper and often when the bread is passed and the fruit of the juice We say, this is the body of Christ. Feed upon him by faith in your heart with thanksgiving. Christians are to be a thankful people. This is a very important principle in life. And on this day, we emphasize that in our worship. It was based primarily in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, David's great song of thanks as the Ark of the Covenant was being brought into Jerusalem. He was so full of happiness and joy. And he called upon all the people to join with him in giving thanks to Yahweh. He said, give thanks to Yahweh. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. And tell of all his wondrous works. As he goes through extolling the name of Yahweh, he gives us three principal reasons why we should be giving thanks to God. I want to share those with you right now. We should give thanks to Yahweh because of his wonderful works to the children of men. And you know the example that he gives them is the example of the Exodus. Now that had happened many years before. But you see, what happened in the past with God's people affects us today because it makes us who we are. The church did not begin in the 20th century, no, the 21st century. The church began more than 2,000 years ago in a way, in a new way on the day of Pentecost, and even before that, as the people of God's choice, going all the way back to the very Garden of Eden, when God himself gave the promise of a Redeemer. So God has been at work in this world for centuries, and he is calling a people out of it for his name's sake to glorify him, upon which he wants to bestow his grace. In fact, in which he has bestowed his grace in Jesus Christ. The wonderful works of God. Look, when you're downcast, when you're having a bad day, give some thought to the wonderful works of God in the history of the world and in your own life, in your own history. We need to remember God's wonderful works and we need to give him thanks for them. Spell them out. Rehearse them before him. That's part of worship. There's a second reason why we should give thanks to God. It's embedded in this text. And that is we need to give thanks to God because he is a covenant-keeping God. He is a God who has made covenant with his people. And he undertakes to fulfill the covenant. There's probably no better picture of that in the Old Testament than found in Genesis, I believe it is 15, where God has Abraham take some animals and he sacrifices them and cuts them in half. He puts one on the right hand and one on the left, and then he is to walk between them. And God causes a deep darkness to fall upon Abraham. He sort of goes into a sleep, almost like a trance-like sleep. And as he is in that state, there's a torch that goes between the carcasses. Now that torch is the presence of Yahweh, the covenant-keeping God. And here we have a sign and a picture of he who was to come, Jesus Christ our Lord, who would undertake to fulfill the covenant so that we could be the sons and daughters of God. We could know him now, and we can have an eternal relationship with him that never ends. There's a third reason we should give thanks to God, and that's because of his glorious person. There's a contrast given 
in First Chronicles 16, between, between the lifeless idols that the people worship and the living and true God who made the heavens and the earth. Look, if, if you have to fashion your own God, if you have to buy him and clothe him and put fee, food in front of him and, and give him offerings and, and bow down to him, you're just creating a work of your own hand and worshiping your own hand in a way, your own desires, your own projections. This is not the living God. These are the useless idols of the day. And maybe you don't actually have a carved image in your house, but you have images in your heart and images in your mind to which you devote your life and your service. Look, these images, these useless, worthless gods can do nothing for you. What you must do is look to the living and true God, he who is the eternal one, he who has come to us, in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Wow, what a glorious God. A God who stoops where we are and lifts us up to the heavenly plane. Can we ever give him thanks enough? Jesus himself gave us a parable about, about our need to be thankful. He tells a story found in Luke 17, where there were some lepers. They're mostly Samaritans and Jewish people. And they were there on the road, and he was on his way to Jerusalem, and he passes by them, and the lepers call out for him to heal them. And they stay a, a big distance away from him because they don't want to defile him. And Jesus tells them to go and show themselves to the priest. Now, you see, this is a law of the Old Covenant, that when you were cleansed from a skin disease such as leprosy, you had to show yourself to the priest in the temple to be inspected before you could rejoin the people of God. So as they were going to the priest, you see, they believed Jesus' word. They believed in faith that what he said he would do, he would do. And so they start on their road to go to the temple to present themselves to the priest. And as they go, their skin is restored and the leprosy disappears. There were 10 of them, but only one turned back and he was a Samaritan who came and fell before the feet of Jesus and gave him thanks. Now Jesus answered and said, we're not ten cleansed, where are the nine? Here's my question. Are you one of the nine? Are you the one that turns back to give thanks? Oh, let it always be the attitude of our mind and heart to offer up continuous praise and thanks to our God. Hear the words of a modern hymn by the Gettys. My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who bore my pain, who plumbed the depths of my disgrace and gave me life again, who created, who crushed my curse of sinfulness and clothed me in his light and wrote his law of righteousness with power upon my heart. Wow, that's indeed a reason to give thanks. This has been Wayne Conrad with Bible Insights. The next time, remember, God calls us to be thankful people.